Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Newtopia. I'm Cambrian Man, and I think I'll find a second dungeon. I don't even think we need anything. I think we just should be able to just head right over and do it. So, uh, I really like the music in this game. Other than the overworld theme, in fact, I actually think I might like the music better than Zelda 1. Other than it's overworld. Not this one. This one's actually pretty good, but, um, Zelda's overworld theme is, yeah. Classic. So I think I said Golden Axe Warrior for the Game Gear. There's actually a different one, which is like Legend of Golden Axe for the Game Gear. Um, and one called... Oof, I can't remember. I don't even know if I'm heading the right way. It tells me to go that way, but I don't think I can go that way unless I go through the mountains. Um, there's one called like Legend of... A Ooh, Legend of Golden Axe. You know, Axe Warrior or Legend of Golden Axe for the Game Gear, and that's what I was thinking of. That's more of a side-scrolling um, hybrid kind of game. Um, it's kind of like Zelda 2 if you would get into random battles, which is kind of weird. Um, Golden Axe Warrior was for the Sega Master System. I had to look that up. I never actually played that one. I played the Game Gear one. One of the things that makes Utopia distinct from Zelda is that there are multiple overworlds. They're not that different, but you know, I guess they kind of are. They are, I think, a lot more maze-like. I mean, they refer to them as labyrinths. I don't think there's really anything to get. I think there's some people that give us money, but nothing else interesting. Kinta comes from the world down under. Remember that, because it's going to be not at all important. Part of the problem is all these people talk and talk and talk, but none of this has anything to do with anything. It never actually matters. Um, I might try to play Newtopia 2. I never got very far in that, but I know it's a m much more complex game. It feels a lot more like an RPG. There's a lot more kind of story to it. Uh, I'm thinking I might play uh, Crusader of Senti as well, because that is a kind of Zelda-style game for the Genesis, and it's kind of... It's actually kind of good. It's one of those games I never even heard of until I was researching Zelda-style games recently. Yeah, how are you going to stop me, dude? Blah, blah, blah. He tells me how to get to the uh, Fire Wand. Later areas will not be so kind. Just like, hey guys, hope you have everything you need, because if you don't, you're kind of out of luck. there's anything else to get in the whole overworld. This might be a pretty short episode. If I finish this real quick, uh, really quickly... Oh, wait. This has, a uh, spike things, I think. Yep. Most of these kind of brownish ones have spikes. So I may actually continue on and show you some of the uh, underworlds as well, because I don't really know that well, that as much as the uh, overworld. Not nearly as well. I really don't remember any of these dungeons. I just test played this a little while ago. I, I wasn't really test playing it. I just wasn't even planning on let's play it until I started playing it again. I was like, oh, not really a game most people have heard of, but it's one that I played, you know, a fair amount. Yeah, thank you for telling me. This game takes all the mystery out of exploration. Yeah, see, that's, that's why I don't use the sword, because... So that's the magic ring. Um, the magic ring will turn enemies into weaker enemies. Not so useful for this dungeon where you got, you know, these guys. But in later dungeons, there are some really, really difficult enemies. Enemies that I don't even feel like fighting normally. Whoa. Basically the whiz robes of uh, Utopia. In fact, they are wizards. And really, the best way to get deal with them is just to 
I'm use the magic item on them. The magic ring. Bronze sword. So it's stronger now. And it's blue. Yes, bronze is blue. Oops. See, that's kind of the extent of it. And yeah, you notice here? Not really a whole lot more items to get. Um, I think we get... I don't even remember what these are. I know what this one is. I don't think... I don't remember what those last two items are. I don't know if that helped us. Yeah, pretty much the entire game is Fireball. Which is not bad, it's a good weapon. So this is stronger, but not by a whole lot. It takes two hits instead of three to kill them. And given the Kind of finickiness of this. See, in Zelda, it works because um, Link is basically a square. Even in uh, Link to the Past, he's still a square. Um, so he's pretty good, but in this case, when you're attacking things, you got to be kind of watching out because you can get hit on your head while you're still just attacking with your sword. And it's really hard. It doesn't really reach the way you think it should. Room out of point. I don't think it does. Or maybe this was the room that he was telling me to bomb. I actually think this is just a dead end. Whoa! Yeah, see the, the bronze armor just absorbed a hit. That's how it works. Um, it like rounds down or something. Actually, that was probably the room we should have bombed. Let's try it. We do not have the uh, boss key yet, though, so... Not a whole lot we can do, but... Yep, there we go. Thank you, old guy who I didn't listen to. Yeah, who cares? We don't have the boss key, so let's go back and find it. Yeah, see, I got 500 gold now. Basically, I don't need to buy anything. I think there's like one thing to buy. Um, and the only thing I really want is occasionally maybe to buy bombs, but usually just to buy uh, health potions. And usually I'll go back to the beginning of the game because there's, you know, you can just teleport back to the save points um, and just buy it for 200 gold. There you go. But this is not the crystal ball. Two hits is too many. It is the crystal ball. And see, as if we couldn't tell that that would be the only way, there's only three places you could possibly bomb. But whatever. Oh, hey. It's not even worth it to use the sword. Since uh, the fireball is so much better knockback and everything, you just you can hit on an angle through walls. I really wish the sword was a little better. Okay, thank you. We need to know that we need to bomb the place we already bombed. Let's look at the antlines. Except, you know, not in the holes. Oh. How come the last one always seems to drop the, uh, the time freezy thing? Hourglass. Which lasts forever, by the way. Hourglass, the hourglass is absurdly powerful. It might as well be invincibility because it lasts so long you can just go through and kill everything on the screen before it, uh, before it expires. Sadly, every dungeon looks like this, and every dungeon has the same music. Which is too bad because I actually kind of like this music. It sounds pretty, uh, you know, dungeony. See? Yeah, hit in the head. 
If I was smart, I'd just stand on the other side of that wall. And just fight where he can't even get to me. But I'm not, so there you go. Alright, key to the crypt. I don't remember what this boss is. Golem, maybe? No. Wow, I really don't remember what this boss is. And I don't think you need anything special to kill it. I think it's just, you know, shoot it with fireballs until it dies. Yeah, these dungeons are a little bit plain. I wish they had more uh, colors to them. Turbo Graphics is nice because it had a lot of colors in a lot of its games. This is not one of them. The overworld actually looks pretty good. And some of the areas don't look half bad for, for their age. This is a pretty early game on the system. 1990. Whoa. But... They were much better looking games. I might even play Bonk's Revenge, which I think looks really good. I forget if the third game is actually on it. It's like Bonk's Big Adventure or something. Ooh, finally. Um... But I always really liked how Bonk's Revenge looked. But it was bright and colorful, which is a lot more than could be said for a lot of Genesis games. Genesis tend to had, tended to have a very brown, dithered palette. Um, everybody remembers Sonic the Hedgehog, but they don't remember all the other games that looked like complete crap on that system. Yeah, I had a Turbo Graphics. I had some good games. Some of them, one of the nice things about the Turbo Graphics is it had the Turbo Tap, which was sadly the only way you could get it to play multiplayer. Um, but it was five-player multiplayer, so if you could round up enough people with uh, with uh, controllers, you could have some fun. Um, Dungeon Explorer was five-player. It is the goal. And that's it. He walks. He shoots out. This reminds me of Cyborg Hunter music, which nobody knows. I may let's play that as well. It's not a. It's an interesting game. It's kind of like a Metroidvania game, um, meets a kind of brawler with <laughs> corridor exploration. It's really strange. Um, that one's for the Sega Master System. But yeah. I luckily had a friend who had a Turbo Graphics as well, so at least one or two times we got together uh, with a bunch of friends and we played Moto Rotor, which is kind of like RC Pro Am. Actually, it's exactly like RC Pro Am. Um, and Dungeon Explorer, five player. Why five? I don't know. I, think they, I don't know if I had Bomberman. I don't know if that was on this. I don't know Crater Maze was, but I don't think that was multiplayer. Alright. Mm, wow, it's been like just over 10 minutes. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna pop into the uh, subterranean sphere and show you what it's like. So, yeah. Subterranean sphere has lava. Whoa. Oh. And <laughs> we already lost it. I'm actually gonna go, let me go back to. And, and, uh, we got our. our uh, Yes. Okay, see that there? That's the password. Imagine trying to do that at age, you know, 10, and having really crappy handwriting, and trying to remember that that was, in fact, the password. I lost it so many times. I will, thank you. Alright, so this is our new version. It is slow, but it moves much farther. And it stays, so if it hits any of those burning things, then you can shoot it twice. See? Um, later on, we'll be able to... Yeah, see? Burning like crazy. Three times, actually. Um, burn a lot of things. It's a little trickier to use. But it's still quite good. Talk about dearth screens. 
Oh, just cannot take them seriously. Oh, I need the... Uh, the moss, I think, is what I need. Next dungeon will be dark. So I'm going to need to locate the moss. So let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, we have a few more minutes. Whoops. This is actually where the game... It's not hard, I mean, but it starts getting significantly more uh, difficult. Oh, yeah. There are dudes that look like other dudes. I hear that a man lives among the Salactites. He, is, he has access to the Jar of Moon and Moss. The Moss can help you find your way. I suggest you help look for the Salactite man soon. telling me this. We already... How would we even get here, get this far if we don't know that? Uh, is it this guy? I already forgot what the, did, what the other dude said. Right. Oh, it's a darkened room. Aha! Medicine of Vitality, which we already have. So it does absolutely nothing. Not what we wanted. I wanted to find the dude. I thought he was here, but I... Also, aren't these stalagmites? You know, G for ground, C for ceiling. I mean, the guy may live among the stalactites, but, um... But these here are stalagmites. Ah, there he is. Hi, dude. Moonbeam boss. That means we can actually go to the next dungeon. Um, but we'll do that next time because I don't feel like doing it right now. See you next time and let's play Newtopia.